the first Sunday in God's house in the new year. So let's hope that this year brings us health and, health and wealth and happiness. Everybody okay with that? <laughs> okay. Um, the, uh, the announcements, I believe, are very few. Um, say a special prayer for our, for our, in the meantime, pastor. His name is, uh, was, is Dr. Lawrence uh, Dennis, and he's sick. So, we have a guest speaker this morning. <laughs> um, our shut-in for the week uh, is Mike Roberts. Remember Mike in your prayers. Send him a card. Um, just to let him know you're thinking of him. Um, we did meet our Lottie Moon uh, mission goal. Uh, actually, we surpassed it. Maybe a little more than what's there, and I don't know. Um, if you'll uh, look back in the back, in the uh, vestibule, there is a, um, a calendar for flowers. Um, be sure that you um, sign up for flowers. It's it's the one thing that decorates the Lord's house every Sunday morning. So, just just think about think about it in that way. And that when you do that, you can remember loved ones as well. Um, and the um, the information is back here in the back. All your literature or any uh, church information that you need is back here in the back on the table. So, be sure you. Um, you take that. Um, and Daniel? Good morning. <laughs> Obviously, I'm not Dr. Dennis, <laughs> and I'm not Ethan. Our plan was to give Ethan another week off, and uh, Dr. Dennis called me last night. So here I am. <laughs> Life changes quick, right? <laughs> this is the first time I've been out in three weeks, or almost a month. But, uh, I'm glad to be back in church. So let's start us off in prayer. Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for everybody that has come to us for this first Sunday of 2021. We don't know what the future may hold, but we know who holds our future. Good things can happen, bad things can happen, but we know we don't have to worry because we know you. Help us have a great day and a great week. In his name we pray. Amen. Time to sing a little bit. I'll ask you to stand with me and let's sing our uh, call to worship, um, The Family of God. This morning, I love you, Lord, and your words are uh, in your bulletin.
something beautiful. The doxology. Travis is going to work his magic. I think Mavis is up there. Oh, the Mavis is going to work his magic. All right.
hope that maybe you got my mic on, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I still got to have a little bit of control, right? Turn it up just a touch. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. So I kind of mentioned it earlier. Um, we were going to give Ethan another week off. We asked Lawrence to preach this morning. And late yesterday afternoon, 6.30, 7 o'clock, my phone rings. Dr. Dennis calling me. And I thought, ooh, this can't be good. <laughs> um, so I think you'll be okay with me saying this. He, he's, he's okay, but he did have a test yesterday, late yesterday afternoon. And um, he, the results don't come in until Monday. So just out of an abundance of caution, he didn't want to, uh, to be here, obviously. So then there's a big scramble at Devon's house at 8 o'clock last night. Oh, no. What do you do? I, I, I figured out. Laura and I counted. I know 23 preachers. 23 <laughs> preachers. How many people know 23 preachers? No, I don't know. One of them doesn't have a church, though. So I called him. I said, uh, I, I coach baseball with him. So on the baseball field, he's named Coach Todd. Last night, I was like, Preacher Todd. <laughs> I said, man, I need you to come to preach in Winsboro tomorrow morning. I know it's short notice. He said, brother, I'm there. And I thought, well, this is great. He said, yeah, I'm, teaching at, I'm preaching at Cornerstone the next three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> A block or two away, Preacher Todd's preaching this morning, but... I don't claim to be a preacher, obviously. I'm not even the chairman of the deacons anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, this obviously has been a very tough year. This is a tough year. 21, uh, 2021, we don't know what 2021 might bring us. We have no clue. I will say this. If you came to Sunday school this morning, they got a preview of this lesson. This is the Sunday school lesson from this morning. <laughs> But I do think it's appropriate and good for all of us to hear this. So we'll be going through Psalm 23, uh, 1 through 6. I'll be flat out honest with you, too. I got it going on Facebook, too. Just to see how many people are actually watching. So if you are watching, thank you. I know somebody's outside listening as well. So we do appreciate we have that going on. We got... We've got um, 14 people watching on Facebook right now. That could be 14 families. That could be 14 individuals. So it's just not us here. So that's always good news. There is. Miss Judy's right. There's room here to social distance. You can sit out here. You can sit upstairs. There's room here. And we hope you get back. Fill this thing back up. But we're talking about worry. And worry is like a rocking chair. You ever sit in a rocking chair? Back and forth, back and forth. You're in emotion a lot, but you're not really getting anywhere. You're just sitting there, back and forth, back and forth. That's what worry is like. Worry is the opposite of faith, complete opposite. It can steal peace. It can physically make us sick. It can wear us out. You ever heard anyone say they're worried sick? People get worried sick. Satan ultimately loves worry because if you're worried, you're not focused on God. Makes sense, right? But we daily face issues and potential situations that may cause us some concern. Concern can turn into worry when we dwell on the issue rather than focusing on God and the answers he provides. God provides the answers. One thing y'all don't have to worry about today is we're not going to be late. Travis or Jonathan, one of them, said, well, if Dad's speaking today, we'll get out early. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> It'll happen. <laughs> but in Psalm 23, it assures us the rest and comfort we have in God. It is a reminder that God cares and is greater than any issue that causes us worry. Worry is out there. I'm going to start off in Psalm 23, 1 through 3. Pretty famous Verses here. The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right path for his name's sake. 
We don't need to worry because we can trust God to provide for us. Now, there's a huge difference between worry and concern. Would you agree? Concern is something you can change. If you're concerned about something, you can change that and make, make some differences. When you worry about something, you really can't do anything about it. You're wasting your time. There's a lot of things we worry about we can't control. I work with a person at, at WLTX that always is worried about what-if scenarios. What if this happens? Then I'm going to do this. And I won't say her name since it's on Facebook, but I say, I'll just call her Joe. Joe, none of this has happened before, and you're worried about something that you're going to do 10 steps from now, and then none of it's happened. But we all worry about what-if scenarios. We worry about our past. We can't change our past. We, we can change our future, but we can't change our past. We also worry about what people think of us. We ever worry about that? We can't change that. And you, the list goes on and on and on. I just happen to find a couple of things that people worry about. I worry about flying. I should be worried about driving, driving to Columbia every day. The odds of me dying are a lot greater in a car than flying. But we worry about things that we shouldn't worry about. The psalm begins and ends with David's reference to a, to a personal name for God, the Lord. David depicted the Lord as a shepherd, a familiar image in the Bible. Abel was a shepherd, Adam's son. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all of those guys were shepherds. The important role of shepherds among the Israelites becomes evident in the terms and the uses as a designation for Israel's leaders as well as the Lord himself. Being a shepherd is an important job. The good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. We've heard that. We've read that before. David knew the Lord as his shepherd, and he really lacked nothing. He had everything he needed. Christmas was just, I get confused, but Christmas was a week ago, right? About 23 days I've lost. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, with COVID. I don't remember a lot. I still have that brain fog. I told Miss Judy, if I say anything crazy, just tell me to stop and pull me off of this podium. <laughs> Your brain doesn't quite, Miss Chris will tell you, your brain doesn't quite, is wired right. We were just talking, I can't stand coffee anymore. I used to love coffee. Can't stand coffee. Miss Chris said she doesn't like coffee either. It's crazy. But we got everything we need. Christmas was just a, a week or so ago. And my mom and dad, they texted me what, a couple of weeks before Christmas. They said, what do you need? I said, I need underwear and socks. No, T-shirt and underwear. <laughs> I'm a very practical person. I shouldn't say this, but I'll say it. My dad said, you, you talking about those whitey tighties? And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> Don't wear whitey tighties, Dad. <laughs> but we got everything we need. Everybody in here has everything they need. And what we really need is water, air, food, shelter, clothing. We've got everything we need. We might not have everything we want. I'd love to have a beach house. I love the beach. I'll probably never have a beach house. <laughs> probably never. <laughs> Still want one. But do we need one? God gives us what we need. He's not going to give us everything that we want. But David further declared his dependence on the Lord's adequacy to meet his needs as a good shepherd. The Lord provided green pastures and quiet waters for his flock. And green pastures were tough to come by, especially in these biblical days. We didn't, they didn't have the irrigation systems that we have now. They had to either make it or find it. Everybody in here has probably worked in a garden at some point. It's hard to grow things. In my yard, the challenge is deer. Can't stand deer. They eat everything. But in biblical times, they would have to find these pastures to feed the sheep. They also had to find water. And this still hadn't just, just, this just didn't happen by chance. They had to go out and do these things. It says they needed quiet waters. Sheep are really scared of everything. I didn't realize this. The more I read about sheep last night at 8.30, <laughs> I learned a little bit about sheep. They're scared of a lot of stuff. We don't have a lot of sheep around here. I think there's some, there were some up in White Oak. But they're scared. They're timid animals. But the Lord still invites those who are thirsty to come to him as the living water. He alone can satisfy our thirsty souls and deepest needs. Just like those sheep are thirsty, God gives us water. We are like the sheep. He gives us food. He gives us security. He gives us the stuff we need. But just like the sheep, 
we also go astray. We get in trouble. I asked them this morning in Sunday school, have people gone astray recently? COVID's terrible. I'll tell you right now, it's terrible. It's life-altering. It's changed me. But do you, are you scared of everything at this point? Are you like the sheep? Or do you put your faith in the shepherd? One of the crazy things about a sheep is it can fall on its back. Anybody know this? It can fall on its back and literally get stuck. It lays there. They thought I was kidding in Sunday school this morning. It will lay there. It's called cast or down or cast down when the sheep falls on its back. It will lay there and die unless somebody literally pushes it over to get it back up on its feet. Or if it doesn't lay there and die, uh, an animal will get it. I guess for us it would be a, uh, what are those animals that we have so bad now? Coyotes. Coyote would get it. But it's helpless laying there unless somebody tips it over and gets it back on its feet. And that was one of the shepherd's many responsibilities to restoring cast sheep. As shepherds in here, is that one of our responsibilities? To reach out to those sheep that have been maybe astray, that are lost, and get them back on their feet? The shepherd designed this, this, this idea here to get his flock back together and ready to travel and move ahead. Sounds like things we should be doing, doesn't it? Getting our people back together and moving ahead. A lot of people are lost. Maybe we're lost as well. We don't know. Have we lost our way? God can get us back on the right path. When I was talking about those sheep on their back last night, I went, I've gone through this lesson about 20 times. I promise you. Promise you. It might not sound organized, but I've gone through it. When I was talking about the sheep, Laura said, man, that's a bad situation. <laughs> Told you I'd say that. But the good shepherd also provides and guides by means of his personal presence to his flock. To thrive as God's people, we need to remain attuned to the shepherd's presence with us rather than straying down our own paths. Sometimes we stray down our own paths. And when we stray down our own paths, we get in trouble just like these sheep. We should stay focused on the shepherd. And when we stay focused on the shepherd, worry becomes unnecessary. This whole lesson is about worry. Psalm 23, 4 through 5, it says, Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no danger, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So when 2020 started, we had no idea what we were getting into. But God was not surprised. He knew what we were getting into, and he knew he was going to get us through it as well. 2021 might not be great either. I was talking in Sunday school this morning. It's crazy to think that people really believe that you turn the calendar over and it changes everything. I can tell you right now, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't change. But we don't have to worry about these things if we're watching the shepherd instead of worrying about other things. We don't need to worry because we can trust God's presence with us. Sheep would face perils in the land. They might fall down deep ravines. They might get caught in the things. They might get into all kinds of dangers. But if they kept their eyes on the shepherd and followed him, he would get them down the right path. Sounds like our lives, right? It's pretty, it's pretty easy to, to look at the shepherd and God and us following him. We can't be sure at what point in his life that David wrote Psalm 23, only that he reflected his experiences tending flocks. We know he faced a lot of challenges. If you look through the Bible, you see what David did. I mean, there's numerous. He faced challenges. But it affirmed that the Lord's presence was with, was with him and had enabled him to successfully meet all his challenges. We're going to face challenges in 2021. 2020 might have been a good year for some. It was a pretty good year for me up to about December 10th, and it changed quick. I told them in Sunday school, too, if you talk to me, you're going to hear a lot of COVID examples because I've lived that life. <laughs> Miss Chris has now lived that life. You're not going to tell me anything about COVID because <laughs> I know it all. 
But the psalmist not only knew the Lord's presence with him, but also experienced the Lord's comforting him. I'll tell you right now, I appreciate people that prayed for me, that called me, that messaged me. Because at one point, I was laying on the couch, and I thought, I'm going to die right here on this couch. And I'm okay with it, because that's how bad I feel. <laughs> Would you agree with that, Miss Chris? <laughs> I was okay. It's like, this is fine. But we don't have to worry. When, if, if, we don't have to worry about these things. Um, in this verse here, it says the rod and the staff. The rod sometimes is described as a club to, to block, block off predators. Uh, the staff is what is described as kind of, y'all seen the staff, it's got the hook and everything. That's why I told Miss Judy this morning, I said, if I say anything crazy, just pull me off with that staff, move me along. But the reference to the Lord and his staff is another way of symbolizing the Lord's presence with his people. Uh, sometimes we need to be corrected by the Lord. We need to be protected by the Lord, and sometimes he might need to pull us out of a hole to get us better. The shepherd looks out for his flock. God, look out, God looks out for us. And, and sometimes the shepherd will even bring, would bring extra food with them. If they couldn't find green pastures, they'd bring a little extra food. And the imagery I got with this is as, as a parent, or I guess maybe the mom, the mom would always have extra snacks for our kids. Laura would always have snacks for our babies when they were little. And I, I gave this example. We sold our, we had a gray Malibu. And we had that thing when the babies were, when the boys were little. And we sold that thing to the Chevrolet place. And I was embarrassed when we took it up there. It had all kinds of food in the back, all over the place. And it stunk. But I thought, you know what? That's still a good mom that brought snacks. Well, the shepherd would keep food for the, for the flock sometimes when grass was limited. The shepherd gives us what we need. God gives us what we need. The ministering presence of the Lord with David motivated him to proclaim, My cup overflows. Does our cup overflow? Does it runneth over? Probably so. If we really look at it, we got everything we need. The overflowing cup may refer to the bounty of the Lord's provisions. The psalmist felt overwhelmed by the shepherd's extravagant provision administrator, administrated by his presence. God provides everything we need. We don't have to worry about stuff. I know it's easier said than done. I'm not going to worry about that. We do. I worry about trash in my yard. It drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. Go out there and pick it up. I go. I was out there picking up that trash one day, and, 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 this is, and then I got sick. I blamed that trash on me getting sick. I said, I know I caught it from picking up that trash. <laughs> I didn't, though. I'm not going to say where I caught it. <laughs> this thing's live on Facebook. I, I, I think I caught it from a basketball game. But I had a mask on. But you know what I had? I had one of those gaiters on. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to this now because I feel like this is safer. Side note, sorry. Uh, last verses here. I told you we're going to be out of here early, won't we? Psalm 23, 6. Only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord as long as I live. We don't need to worry because we can trust God's goodness. David ended this poem by reflecting on the Lord's goodness and his faithful love. The word faithful love conveys the concepts of both love and loyalty. It describes love's, uh, God's loyal love for those in a covenant relationship to him. But did David mean that bad things weren't going to happen? No, bad things are going to happen. Bad things happen to good people too. Bad things happen to bad people. Years ago, I, I know I've told this story several times. Years ago, I was speaking to a class in Columbia, and this was right after Katrina, and a little girl raised her hand. They all asked crazy questions. And she said, what did the people of New Orleans do so bad that caused Katrina to hit them? I thought, man, that's a deep, <laughs> that's a deep question to ask, to answer in the public school. But I didn't really have an answer. I, who know, you know, how do you answer that? But then later on, I, I figured out, you know, bad things happen to all kinds of people. But bad things happen to show God's power. God gets us out of these things. But we too can have life-changing, life-altering events. Like I said before, COVID was life-altering to me. But my story didn't end. It keeps on going. Just like David's story goes on. Our story continues. The psalmist may have been acknowledging the Lord's capacity to bring good out of even the worst situations. 
Can we find the good even in the bad? That's tough to do. We can, I think about this year, a lot of bads happened. Y'all remember in, I'll say it, February, March, it seemed like the church was growing. Our numbers were filling in. We were getting more and more people, and then bam, stops. COVID. But we got a pantry out there. We're reaching other people. We got a Facebook live stream. We're reaching other people. We got a radio station that's going through this whole area. It's reaching people. Good and the bad situations. We got to find them. I'm the most negative person in the world, I think. You knock me down, I'm like, oh, man, I can't believe it. <laughs> I complain to Laura. Why has this happened to me? I'm a victim. Why, why did this happen to me? It always happens to me. And Laura has to straighten me out. You try, you're being a victim. Don't be a victim. But David, in this psalm, he ended on a note of victory, that he would dwell in the house of the Lord as long as he lived. Now, long as he lived kind of sounds like when he dies, it's over. But as Christians, we know it's not over. As believers on this side of, of Christ's coming, death, and resurrection, we know we have assurance of the Lord's presence with us throughout this life, and we anticipate eternity when we delight in the goodness of his immediate presence. In Psalm 23, David affirmed his confidence in the Lord. He had learned that God cares and is greater than any issue that worried him. So what are we worried about? God's greater than these issues. Nothing, not even death, can separate believers from God's love. We not only have a companion, but also a guide through whatever experiences life throws at us. We kind of got a GPS. You ever go somewhere and your GPS not work, and all of a sudden you're just like, where am I going? That's me. I used to know Columbia, like the back of my hand. Not anymore. But if that GPS fails, I'm done. We got, we got life's GPS right here. We got God with us. Read your Bible. Stay in it. But God's presence with us can transform even the worst situations. Look for the good. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Good things can happen in the worst situations. Because we have assurance of the Lord's guidance, provision, presence, and goodness, we don't have to worry. Tough to do, but we can do it. A few last things here. Still good on time, only 11.35. <laughs> you know, the barn's not open anymore on Sundays. You know, that was, we'd be running out the door out there, but not anymore. <laughs> Sorry. One good thing about COVID is I don't eat nearly as much. I've lost seven pounds. <laughs> food tastes disgusting. A lot of food just tastes disgusting to me. But anyway, I won't worry about that. Can't worry about it, right? If I worry about it, it's, the whole lesson's gone. But a couple of things we can do. We can recognize that worry can't help you. It's not going to help you do anything. Worry harms you. And as Miss Judy said this morning, it can consume you. When it consumes you, what are you doing? You're, you're stuck in it. There's a big difference between worry and concern. We can, can change things that we're concerned about, but we really can't do anything about things we worry about. I'm concerned about the church. I'm trying to do things different. If you guys think of any ideas that we can do, let's try it. Let's try to get people in the doors. But we can't worry about it. We've got to put it on God. We can be concerned, but we can do something about it. What triggers your worry? Try to get away from those worries. Choose how you respond to worry. You can always pray about those things. Trust God will change you or change the situation. Ooh, that's hard to do. We don't like to change. Change your thoughts. Be more positive. It's easy to be negative. Be positive. Live a healthier lifestyle. Exercise. Eat better. I know that's hard to do. Look to God no matter what the situation is. Pray. Pray. Prayer is greater than any worry that you're facing. God is always working even when it doesn't seem like it's happening. Worry will steal your joy from the presence. 
from the present, from today. If you're worried about tomorrow or next week or the following week or, or next year, you're not enjoying today. Lastly here, count your blessings. Y'all know that song, count your blessings, name them one by one. 1897, written by Johnson Oatman. Because if we are counting our blessings, honestly, we won't have time to worry about much of anything. And so, try not to worry. It's tough. But if we were following God, like the, she like the sheep follow the shepherd, we'll be fine. 2021 will be fine as well, and we'll, uh, we'll get through it. I do want to say, if, if anyone's watching online, um, if you need to talk to someone, a deacon, Ethan will be back. I texted him at some point this week. He sounded like he was doing better. Uh, if you need to talk to anybody, if you're not from around this area and need to find a church, we will help you find a church in your area. But you can obviously come, come to our church. Plenty of spaces out here. But I'll, uh, I'll close this out now. Lord, thank you for bringing us here today. Thank you for this uh, psalm that you've given us. Help us uh, take to heart that we don't have to worry about things that, that sometimes can consume us and, and uh, really overtake our lives and make us focus on this worry. Help us focus on you this year. Help us focus on building the church and being part of the church and help us be the best year that we've had as servants to you. Help us have a good day and a good rest of the week and bring us back here next week. In his name we pray. Amen.